Welcome to my bathroom shower with one small little shower head. So today's project is gonna be adding this additional rain shower head. Now there's a couple parameters and products you're gonna to need to make this happen. Number one, you're gonna to have to pick out a trim kit. Secondly, you're gonna need a corresponding matching brand rough-in shower valve. So we're gonna get out the stud finder and mark our stud locations on our access wall. This wall is right behind our shower, so it should have access to our plumbing. I like to make vertical lines right in the center of the stud. That way, when I cut the sheetrock patches out, then when they go back on, I can hit a couple screws on the studs and it's a lot easier. You don't have to put in any bracing to catch the sheetrock patches. So once we have this patch removed, we'll have access to everything we need to make this job happen. This right here is the back wall of our shower and about right in this location is where I'm going to want the shower valve. Up top there is where I'm going to put the shower head. Only issue we've run into is our vent pipe is going to be a little bit close to our shower valve. So we're going to have to keep that in mind when we go to mount our rough and valve. And to locate the second valve with the original one, we're just going to use a simple laser level. What we're going to do to drill through this tile is use a diamond hole saw tile bit. This is for tile and stone and brick, everything else. We're going to go slow, put a mark right to the center, and then we can finish it off with a diamond angle grinder blade. These drill bits work great, but they do take a little more time than your traditional bit. Just remember, take it slow and keep water on the bit. And then here's the center hole. We're going to use this to line our shower valve up. Perfect. Now this is the Delta. The model of this one is the corresponding model to our shower trim kit and they are sold separately. So you have to make sure you get the right ones, but it's very simple. This back plate mounts to a uh, cribbing stud that we're gonna mount in between these two walls. This black square is your little guide for your depth, and this will actually stick through the square that we're gonna cut in the back of the backer board. And then you simply hook all these up with some fittings, which we'll go over in just a little bit. Now I'm just gonna use the black plastic shroud for my guide to sketch out the square on our back of our backer board. And to cut the backer board from the inside, I'm just using a general multi-tool with a general construction blade on it. I knew it would cut through the backer board because it's a cement product pretty easy. And then it actually stopped when it hit the back of the tile since it's ceramic. So it worked out perfect. And with the help of a flathead screwdriver, we simply just chipped away at the backer board, the concrete until we got to the back of the tile. And on the face side of the tile, we're gonna to use the same technique. Our black plastic square guide will work perfectly with our center hole. And then we will punch holes in the corner of the square. That way, when I use my angle grinder with my tile diamond bit blade, I don't have to make overcuts on the tile and it'll be one perfect square. And here's the diamond blade I got from my angle grinder. This actually worked out way better than I thought it would. It was a little bouncy at first. I think that's just because it was an Amazon cheap blade and it wasn't exactly a circle. So after the bouncing kind of subsided, we were able to punch the hole perfectly. Then we test fit the valve and it was a perfect fit. As stated earlier, this shower valve was one that was recommended for my shower trim kit. Now we're just gonna cap off our tub spout and then we're gonna use our half inch PEX crimp adapters for the other brass fittings. On the sides of the valves is where your hot and cold enter and then the top of the valve will send water up to your shower head. And all three of these will get a PEX adapter and get crimped with an O-ring. Now it's switched over to PEX and we're gonna add some 90 degree fittings to send our water lines going down. As you can see, we are ready to install. Now we have our rough end valve plumbed up with the PEX. We just stubbed it out you know, to approximate length that we think we're gonna need. Now we are ready to mount it. Here's our cribbing two by four. We're gonna mount right here with some screws and this will attach right to the back side of this. So looking through the shower, it'll look just like that. And from the back side, it'll look like this. So So this is what the valve looks like installed on the shower side. And now I'm just gonna put my laser level back up measure my height for the shower head hole, drill that and get that installed the same way. Okay. 
since I drilled the hole from the tile shower out, I'm gonna go ahead and mount this to my crippling piece of wood. That way I can line it up with the hole perfectly, slide it through the hole and then screw it to the two by four wall studs right where it sits and that will be lined up perfect. And I left the bottom hanging out, that way when it is lined up, we can go ahead and connect the pecs and I'll still have room to crimp it from the bottom side. All right, everything is roughed in perfectly. Last thing I do is kill the water and tie in all the plumbing with our PEX lines. If you're on a well, normally you will have a shut off in your well house and then another one coming into the house. If you're on city water, just go out front to your sidewalk or close to your road and you'll see like a iron sewer cap that's a oval shape, like an egg. Pull that off and there'll be a shut off valve inside there to kill your water. It's always good to know that in case you ever get a water leak. You can never get to the shut off fast enough. We're tying our new shower head into the washer and dryer hookups. We probably won't be running the washer at the same time as taking a shower very often. So I feel we'll get adequate pressure out of these lines. So what I did now is I just cracked these and I'm just draining what's in there. You will get a little bit of residual water come out of these pipes when you cut them, but this is the pec setup. So we're gonna get these pipes cut, catch what drains um, with just a rag or a shirt or a bucket, whatever you can, and then we'll hook up all this pec stuff and I'll show you guys exactly how to do that because it is so easy to run pecs. So here's a half inch pex line we're gonna be tying in. Normally you have three quarter or half inch in a residential home. Now pex, all it is, is a plastic flexible tube and you have this O-ring that crimps on top of your fitting. And then the O-ring slides right up on the fitting like this and you can actually see it has a stop right there to where it'll only let it go so far where it stops right there is exactly where you crimp it. Now this is the tool I got from Amazon a couple years ago. It works great. As you can see on the head, it is for three quarter and half inch. So what you do is this fitting will slide in here right inside the crimper just like that and get everything lined up perfectly before you crimp. And then once it is lined up and you're in position, all you do is take the PEX crimper and squeeze it until it stops. And once it stops, it'll set the exact uh, pressure around this ring and that is it, you are good to go. So we're gonna get all these cut in and then we'll get the power back on and see if we got any leaks. The plumbing's all tied in behind this wall. Now we're back in the shower for one more critical piece that's missing that actually is not included with these rough-in valves. So this is how your rough-in valve is gonna be shipped and this is how it's gonna look after you get it installed. This is actually a test cap that it comes with right here. So if you pull this out, the plumbers can come in, install it, and they can turn the water on and make sure you have no leaks. Now you can't run a shower with this. So you wanna take this out and you actually have to purchase these separately and they are specific to each brand. This is a Delta, so this is a Delta shower valve cartridge. It's gonna go inside there and then we can button everything up and move on. Just like that. And then your ring goes back on, hold it on. Next we have our O-ring. This steadies the brass sleeve when you put it on. It'll sit right behind this nut, just like that. And this spacer, it's right there. Slide right over.
Now the handle is complete. Now we're going to install our shower head and the shower head arm. And then we got a liberal amount of Teflon tape. And then we have our spacer cover that slides right on over it after you get it installed. All right, fingers crossed. <laughs> Everything's looking great on the back end as well. I usually like to keep a lot of this dust uh, sheetrock dust on top of these fittings because if it does start leaking um, it really makes it noticeable and easy to tell if you have a water leak since there is a lot of connections we added back here i'm going to leave this sheetrock off for a couple days and keep an eye on it just to make sure we don't have any leaks before we button the whole thing back up all right guys that completes another project and adding an additional shower head to your shower now i know behind me looks like a crazy mess with all the holes in the walls but keep in mind if you never look in your walls especially around high water areas like around your shower you can never spot or catch problems before they turn tragic so it's definitely worth doing this every few years at least taking a peek behind your shower stand up custom showers especially a lot of times they skip a lot of steps when doing those and you don't want it to rot out your whole wood floor, especially if you're not on a slab. Now this job took me about three or four hours to complete and all the products that I used will be listed down below in the description with some additional info. If you like this type of content, hit that subscribe and thumbs up button and stick around and we'll see you next week for another project. Take it easy guys. Good job, bud.